So hello guys and welcome back to AutoCAD tutorials. In today's session, we are going to see how we can calculate bar bending schedule for slabs. So here for that, I have taken one of the reference drawings in which I have made a section 11. In this section 11, we will see slab S4, S5, S5, S5 and slab S3. The main intention of showing this section is to study the continuation of the bars which will travel in the slab. For example, this is slab S4 and a two-way slab, but it is a sunken slab. Similarly, slab S5 is one-way slab and S3 is also two-way slab. The arrow marking here indicates the direction in which your main steel will travel. For example, this slab S5, the direction is made in vertical direction, means the main steel will travel in Y direction. And similarly, for this two slab S5, the direction is shown as horizontal direction so the main steel will travel in x direction. So I have made a section to get a better understanding, section 11, which is shown over here. In this section 11, here is our slab S4, which is sunken slab and is 200 mm down from normal level. So being slab S4 is two-way slab, if you will see over here, S4 is two-way slab, the direction of main steel is same as direction of S5, but the continuity of slab is not maintained so the reinforcement bar of s4 won't be traveling in slab s5 similarly this s5 the reinforcement won't travel in slab s4 since continuity at this junction is not maintained for the slabs when we talk about slab s5 and this s5 if we see in plan the main steel of s5 travel in horizontal direction as well as this steel travels in horizontal direction. So the steel of S5 of this S5 will travel in slab towards right hand side and slab S5 steel will travel in the slab towards left hand side. This is what shown in this section that this steel will travel in slab S5 and the steel of S5 situated at right hand side will travel in the slab S5 situated at left hand side. Now, when we talk about these two slabs, S5 and S5. Now, issue over here is like the direction of this slab S5 on the left hand side travels along X axis and main steel of this S5 situated on right hand side travels along Y axis. So the continuity of the slab is not maintained on this beam. So reinforcement of this S5 won't go in this slab and the reinforcement of slab S5 will not travel into this slab S5. This is what's shown in this section as well. If you will look carefully, this slab reinforcement of S5 is not traveling in other S5. It is getting stopped at this beam face. Similarly, this S5 is also not traveling into slab at left hand side now as we will see this slab s5 and s3 here also we face the same kind of scenario this slab is uh, traveling in y direction and this is traveling in x direction so slab still won't go in each other and the same is shown over here steel of slab s3 is terminated on this beam face and steel of s5 is terminated on this beam face. So basically the main intention was to show how the slab steel will travel and how a slab will be termed as continuous slab or discontinuous slab because BBS mainly depends upon the continuity of the slab whether the slab reinforcement will travel in other slab or not. So this was the main intention to show the continuity of the slab and how to check the continuity of the slab. Now here I have marked the reinforcements as well whose length we will be working out in Excel sheet. So moving on with the Excel sheet. Now, here I have already made a format in which all the cells marked in yellow will be filled by us and rest all will be filled directly by Excel since the sheet is completely formulated and we all work with completely formulated sheet. So we will just fill this tab marked in yellow cells. So first we will start with this slab s5 which is located here in this plan so first of all we will see what are the directions of uh, sorry what are the dimensions of this slab 
So first, this is the main of 970 length and the other dimension is of 1322 or I will say 1320. So the shorter span is of 970. Here I have clearly mentioned as well a long span that is short span and across span that is long span. So here I will put my direction of shorter span 970 and here I will put dimension of my longer span 1320. Depth of slab is 100 mm and cover assumed is 30. Now in slab schedule for S5. The main steel is of 8 mm 250 center to center. Now here in diameter we will add 8 spacing as 250. Now you can see number of bars has been automatically came over here because it is well formulated sheet. Now here something I have marked as slab at left, beam at left, slab at right, beam at right. Now we will just fill the dimensions of these elements. For example, slab at left, if we will go into our drawing, in left hand side we have slab S4, but we don't have this slab in continuity. In the section we have seen that S4 is not in continuity with S5, so we don't have any slab here in the left hand side. So we will keep this slab as 0. Now beam at left, beam at left of S5 is of width 160 mm, so we will put here 160. Now. Here we have a continuous slab S5 whose width is 900 mm. So we will put here slab at right as 900 mm and beam at right as 160 mm. So you can see over here we have got our cutting length ready. Since our uh, format is well formulated, it directly give, gives us cutting length. Now the first one was steel starting from left hand side now we will see steel starting from right hand side means steel starting from right hand side from here so again dimensions will remain same for our slab so i will keep it as 970 1320 100 30 8 250 slab at left is again zero beam at left is 160 slab at right is 900 and beam at right is 160 so you can see Cutting length has been automatically adjusted according with our situation. Now to see whether the cutting length is right or not, we will have a look in our drawing. So in our drawing, the bar which is in light bluish color is starting from left hand side. The topmost region of the bar is starting from the left hand side. Hence, this bar is starting from left hand side. This was our first case in the BBS. This row which states as main steel from left side along the span. So we will check dimension of this bar to know whether our dimensions over here is correct or not. So what I have done is I have drafted my reinforcement steel in this drawing and I have copy pasted it above. So as you can see, the first dimension is 229, which is there in our format 228.57. The crank dimension is 57 mm. And we have got our crank dimension as 56.8 and rest of the dimension as 961 and we have got our rest of the dimension as 961.43 so basically if i will round it off everything to two digits we will get answer matching with this drawing now for the second reinforcement which was starting from the right hand side so it is starting from the right hand side now we will check with the dimensions the first dimension is 587.5 587 starting from the right hand side crank portion as 57 mm so crank portion as 56.8 and remaining portion as 858 remaining portion as 857.5 so in this way we came to know that our formula is correct so we can go with this formula in any slab so this was only for one way slab and here we have an example of two way slab as well so I have taken an example of slab S2 in our drawing, which is located over here, S2. What I have done is I have splitted my slab into four parts. Why? Because when we will check with the length, this is 2770 and this is 3550. So what we come to know is the reinforcement which is traveling along the X direction is our main steel and the direction 
uh, and the steel which is traveling along y direction is our secondary steel so to begin with when we see the drawing we come to know that in this sunken region our steel bars won't be continue in the next slab since here it is slab s1 here it is slab s3 directions are same for x direction so our steel will travel in both of the slabs as we have seen the case in our sectional drawing but in this sunken region for a distance of 401 or i will say something 402 maybe to be more specific 410 our steel won't be continuous in slab s3 and for the remaining portion of the length our steel will be continuous in slab s3 Similarly, in y direction as well, when we see this slab S5, the main reinforcement of this slab is along x direction and this reinforcement traveling in y direction won't travel in this slab since slab is discontinuous for this much portion. And when we talk about slab S5 in this length of 1710, slab still will travel in this slab S5 since direction of S5 is same in y direction, main steel of S5 is as same in y direction. So to begin with, keep, in, keep one thing in mind as the x direction is our shorter, shorter span and y direction is our longer span. So in our format, first I will freeze this panes for me. Now, S2, main steel from left hand side. We will start first with left hand side. So the length of the main steel will be or the length of main slab direction is 2770. So I will specify here as 2770. In across span, I will first enter the length 410. Since in this much portion, our steel cutting length will be different and in the remaining portion, steel cutting length will be different. So I will keep this as 410. Slab depth of S2 is 100 mm. Cover assumed is 30. Now in slab schedule, slab S2, the main steel is 8 mm 175 center to center so i will specify here as 8 spacing as 175 so number of bars has been automatically calculated now slab at left in left hand side if we will look into our drawing we have slab s1 having width 3430 so i will specify width as 3430 beam at left width of this beam is 160 slab at right width of this slab is sorry i don't have any slab for this much portion so i will specify slab at right as zero and beam towards right is of width 200 mm so i will specify this as 200 so again from the right hand side as well i will start the same thing because our sheet is well formulated i just have to paste everything which is written above so our cutting length has been derived for both the direction as you can see with our conditions, our cutting length has been derived and both the cutting length are of different sizes. Now, the second thing is main steel from left hand side. Sorry, main steel from left hand side. Okay, for the remaining portion. Now, for this portion, we, we are talking about. So, the main direction will be 2770 only. And the remaining dimension is 3140, 130 this criteria will remain same slab at left that is slab s1 is again 3430 beam at left is 160 now slab at left we will have something which is 5460 since the steel of s2 will travel in slab s3 so we will specify here as 5460 and beam towards right is 200 now again for other direction i will just copy paste my data here so as you can see cutting length has been adjusted according to our situation and both the length are different cutting length if you will see both cutting lengths are different so in this way we work out with our two-way slab this was of one direction now we will see how y direction is calculated so for that firstly our short span is x direction so we have bifurcated our slab as 1060 and 1710 Okay, so first we will enter the dimension as 1060 of x direction, 1060 and the length of our steel will be of 3550. So this is across span length 3550, slab depth of 100, cover of 38 mm dia, 
with spacing of 250 center so i will specify my spacing as 250 center now slab at left now will keep on changing now since we are working in y direction so our left slab will become this slab s5 now the direction of this s5 in, is in x direction so our slab is discontinuous in this portion so i will specify slab at left as zero but we have beam and width of this beam is 250 so i will specify beam at left as 250 now we don't have any slab on right hand side as well so i will specify slab at right as zero and beam at right as 200 now i will just copy paste my this data here now this was for the left hand side right hand side now for other side now again for this region my length will be 1710 the length of my slab is 3550 in y direction depth is 100 cover is 30 dia is 8 spacing 250 now i have slab at left and width of this slab is 1000 mm so i will specify here as 1000 beam at left is of same 250 width so i will specify as 250 for this is 1000 now slab at right again we don't have any slab at right so it will be kept as zero and beam at right is 200 now again for still coming from other hand side we will specify same thing our conditions will remain same but our cutting length will be adjusted as per our conditions here you can see again both the cutting lengths are of different length since one of the steel is traveling in s5 and other steel is not traveling in s5 so in this way we work out with the bbs of slab and the link for this automated excel sheet is mentioned in the description so you can go and download this sheet as well and you can refer for your working i hope you like this video and if you like this video please do like share and subscribe thanks once again